Hello, my name is Justin Lockler, and welcome to another episode of Conversations in the Void. Tonight we'll be speaking with a video and performance artist who is represented by Row 2 Gallery and recently closed her show, Nice, at the Out of the Loop Fringe Festival in Addison, Texas. It was an extension of her show that premiered at the Wiley Theater at the AT&T Performing Arts Center as part of the Elevator Project. Her video work was selected as part of the 2013 Texas Biennial, and she has shown recently at the Eugene Bender Gallery in Marfa, Women and Their Work in Austin, Texas, and has shown nationally and internationally in Fresno, New York City, and Berlin. Tonight, we'll be speaking with Danielle Giorgio. Danielle Giorgio, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Now, I want to talk about your dance group, DGDG. Um, while there's definitely dance involved with your shows, you would argue that it's not strictly a dance company. Can you describe where your aesthetic came from uh, for the work that you do with the dance company? Sure. Um, well, we use dance, dance as our medium, um, but just as one of them. So we're also using physical theater ideas from uh, German expressionism. And one of my main influences is Pina Bausch. Um, and while she fits within this dance spectrum, um, her work was more than just dance. It was about creating experiences for the audience that's involved, and that's the type of work that I want to continue to grow and practice within. So while our name is DGDG, the Daniel Giorgio Dance Group, it's called that one because my initials were dance group, and the dancers thought that that would be really funny. Um, but it's also a way for audiences to approach our work, to come in thinking, okay, we understand what dance is, and then um, an avenue for us to expand that idea so they can see that dance isn't just about how many turns and leaps that you can do, but it's about emotions and feelings and real human experiences. And as a company, you split your time between more traditional environments like theaters and dance halls, and then, and then also at concerts and galleries. Can you mm -hmm. kind of describe um, the scope of, of your performance aesthetic in terms of where you perform and who you perform with? Sure. Um, well, we will perform anywhere. It doesn't have to be a stage. I actually prefer if it's not a stage. Um, we got our start in a warehouse gallery space on Dragon um, and really stayed within that sort of alternative location for about the first couple of years that we were around. And we've slowly started to integrate into a more traditional stage setting. Um, the biggest one being the Wiley mm -hmm. in November. Um, but we also perform a, a lot with local musicians. Um, we're actively performing with George Quartz. Um, we were in Sarah Jaffe's recent music video. Um, I used to dance for Ishii. And uh, we really like to be involved in the local scene because we work a lot with local musicians. Um, we work with Un Unconscious Collective. Um, we've worked with Jeremy Johnson, who plays with George Quartz, and most recently we worked with Paul Slavens. And so your background predominantly was dance uh, when you came into more visual art. Mm -hmm. And describe kind of what your dance background looked like. Well, I started dancing when I was three. Right. And I continued to dance um, throughout my childhood and in high school. And when it was time to go to college, I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. Okay. I actually got a degree in international business and in French. Um, I did dance in college, but I didn't get a degree okay. in dance. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to go to grad school for political science. So I did. And uh, my focus was arts policy and arts education. So I did a lot of public policy work and arts administration, um, and I worked for a political think tank for about four years. And that experience was invaluable. I'm, I don't think that I would have been able to start a dance company or feel prepared to really explore myself um, as an artist without that background. Having a business background and having a political background, you learn a lot about marketing and, and how to manage your time and yourself and other people. And that becomes really important when you are trying to create a place for yourself in the world. Um, and do you feel like you were able to bring that kind of uh, research-based academia and, 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 um, and work ethic into your video work and what you've accomplished through your, your graduate studies as well? 
Absolutely. Um, I think when I started at UT Dallas, which is where I am now working on my PhD in aesthetic studies, that's when everything started to make a lot more sense. Um, when I was working on my master's, my thesis advisor told me, you need to go to grad school again, and you need to go for humanities and art because that's what you're meant to be doing. You're a great writer, you're a great researcher, but you have so much more to offer. And you can combine the two things. And so I really took what you said to heart, and I went. And I'm working on my dissertation right now. Um, but the professors that I study under at, at UT Dallas really pushed me to find different ways to explore myself and to integrate the research that I do and the consistent theories that I'm really interested in and put them into a practical setting. And briefly describe what those theories and themes are and how your ability to do research uh, work together in, in your most recent show, NICE. Um, well, I'm particularly interested in German expressionism, the Weimar culture, and this idea of a new woman, um, as well as theories in physical theater, and, and finding ways to combine those images with dance and, um, and physical theater techniques. And so with NICE, we use a lot of archival footage and... Um, of these very classic dances, so the black bottom and, and uh, polkas, and placed them uh, against these songs from the 1940s um, that are still relevant today. So they're talking about ideas of um, body image and how to treat your daughter, and even though they were made in the 40s and they made a lot of sense then, they still make the same amount of sense now. And um, with NICE, we wanted to tackle ideas in contemporary societies, such as like bullying and mm -hmm. violence against women and violence against men and sexual identity and gender identity, but also look back to see where those issues started from. Nice. And so with your work with DGDG, as well as your own video work, mm -hmm. does, uh, does research uh, span uh, back throughout the century, or is it also pop culture today? Oh, I'm heavily influenced by pop, pop culture. Uh, a majority of my video work and photography work deals with pop culture and pop icons. Uh, I'm really interested in the idea of celebrity and how we can make ourselves into our own celebrity. Mm -hmm. um, so with my video work, that's what I'm exploring. So I'm taking pop songs from today and stripping them down, rewriting them, and making these uh, lyrical poems out of them, as opposed to the songs that they originally were, and becoming that pop figure. And also playing around with different um, uh, aspects of popular culture, such as the selfie. Your show, Women at Women and Their Work, was all about selfies? Yes. Um, and it was based off of uh, a Beyonce lyric, I Woke Up Like This. And it became a trending hashtag on Instagram. And so I was just perusing through it, and I, and I saw what people were posting, which was these very heavily made-up images of, of what they looked like when they woke up. And I wanted to do the opposite of that. So I was posting these stripped-down, right-when-I-woke-up images. So I would set the alarm, it would go off, I'd roll out of bed, take my picture. And how did the gallery in Austin seem to respond to that? Extremely well. They were uh, really into the show. It was a very different show for women and their work. They were very supportive of it. I was selected for the so solo show, and they were along for the entire process. And um, it was something that they, they wanted to be a part of, too, because it was an issue that women are dealing with right now. And they thought that it was really great to have a woman's voice speaking up for it and, and showing the other side of it. Um, and so in the gallery... At that point, I was a hundred and some odd days into the project, uh, which I did for a year. Mm -hmm. And we filled the entire gallery with images of my head and these uh, multi-channel videos and overlapping projections. Uh, and so everybody was surrounded by a very graphic and honest image of what a woman looks like. And so do you think that people are, are drawn to your narrative or to their own, or what do you see some sort of reaction from viewers? Mm -hmm. I think that they're drawn to both. Um, I think they could see a lot of themselves in it, or somebody that they knew. Um, and uh, the reaction was on both ends of the spectrum. Uh, I had a lot of positive and supportive comments, and then I had equally not as positive and supportive comments. And I, and I did this in a very public 
sphere. I mean, it was on Instagram on a public profile. It was on Twitter. It was on Facebook. And I was monitoring what people were saying about me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had to learn how to uh, confront those comments. Cool. Now, I want to talk briefly about your upcoming event at the Dallas Museum of Art mm-hmm. on April... 17th. April 17th, which is a Friday. Yes. Uh, describe what DGDG will be doing. Well, we're doing two different things for their late night. Um, from 8 to 9 o'clock, we're going to be hosting a workshop that's going to deal with issues of identity and how to uh, learn to communicate with your body, both verbally and non-verbally, um, different aspects of, of the word identity. So we're going to use um, some very traditional dance and theater concepts and work and uh, workshops and exercises to get through our workshop that's um, going to be more devised. So we're going to use the, the audience or the, the spectators who come in to play with us to help form um, a mini performance out of that workshop. And then at 9.30, uh, we'll be doing parts of NICE in the C3 gallery in front mm-hmm. of the big wall of TV monitors, which I'm really excited about, um, because we're, we're going to be able to integrate uh, multimedia and technology, which is a huge part of what I do and what DGDG does in our stage and gallery productions. Um, so it's going to be really cool to do that at the DMA. And so if people are painters or sculptors or photographers or what have you, mm-hmm. um, and they want to get an idea of what physicalizing performance or physicalizing mm-hmm. ideas would look mm-hmm. like, this would be something for them? Absolutely. Um, I think it, it would be really beneficial for artists of, of any medium, because if you can connect to how your body reacts and how it moves and what you're instinctively and organically feeling, I, I think that you would find a new avenue into your own artwork. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I did start as a dancer, um, but I am a video artist, and the way that I choreograph and the way that I dance has influenced heavily how I edit video and how I shoot video, um, and, and it and it affects my photographs. And you know, I I work collaboratively, so I work with a lot of artists and a lot of different mediums, and they all want to dance with us because they just feel more connected to themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think for a painter, for a photographer, for another video artist, um, for a sculptor, sculptors especially, um, to to feel your own body and then to feel somebody else's um, can really change how you manipulate a material. And uh, how can people find out about the event on the 17th? Uh, You can go to the DMA's website. DMA's website. um, And we're going to be a part of their late night, so it is a free event. So, I mean, it's a free workshop, Mm -hmm. so everyone should totally come out for it, and a free performance. Um, So you can check it out on the DMA's website. You can look at our Facebook page, uh, DGDG Dance Group's Facebook, um, and our website, DGDGDanceGroup.com. DGDGDanceGroup.com, Dallas Museum of Art, April 17th, which is a Friday. It's a free event for a workshop and performance. You can find out more below as well as on their website, Uh, This has been Danielle Giorgio, I've been Justin Locklear, and this has been Conversations in the Void. Thank you very much for watching.